We're in the middle of a sermon series right now called the Hall of Faith. Well, I don't know. We were at the end a couple weeks ago, and then I decided to just keep it going. And uh, what it is, it's the stories of the people in uh, Hebrews 11, which is a uh, chapter that's kind of put at the end of an amazing book about Jesus. It's all about Jesus and his sacrifice, his love for us, what he's done, what he's doing, why we should persevere. And uh, right at the end, right before he gets into some exhortations to the church, he starts, he just gives us an entire chapter full of names and says, listen to these guys. I mean, I know you're going through a lot. I know there's a lot of things happening in your life right now. I know things are, are, are the government's coming down on you. And I know you've got frustrations because your family's left you behind and you've lost your job and things are bad. But you know what? Here's a group of people who were able to, in scripture, and they're just normal like you are. And they were able to hold on to faith. And it's an amazing, amazing chapter. And so we're going through name by name by name. And today we come to a guy named Jephthah. But before we do that, why don't we pray? Father in heaven, thank you so much that you brought us here this morning. I ask for your help, your divine assistance to be able to uh, carry through and, and speak the whole time. Uh, but if you, your wisdom, you want me to lose my voice halfway through, uh, I'm sure half the people here would be fine with that too. I ask, Lord God, that you would also have your Holy Spirit carry these words along. I ask that you would help us to not only understand, but bring your word into our heart. We think of the woman at the well who, who was confused about being thirsty. She thought that you were giving water from a well, when in fact you were offering her the water of life that would be renewed inwardly forever. And so we, we ask for that today, that your Holy Spirit would illuminate, give us the gift of illumination, that it might open up our eyes to see what you have for us in Scripture. Convict us of sin, challenge us, encourage us in the places you want us to be encouraged. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Um, I emptied my cup earlier. Could, would you mind grabbing a, an usher? Usher, would you please grab me a cup of water? Um, the more I read the faith stories of Hebrews 11, uh, the more hope it gives me. I'm realizing more and more as I study these stories that they weren't just written for other people, but are in fact there to give me hope as well. Uh, these stories aren't about men and women who did amazing things for God, aren't they amazing? Uh, but they're a group of messed up people who God was willing and able to use and to bless other with, others with and to, to save people by. These people that were messed up, he was able to carry his plans forward despite the fact that they were weak and despite the fact that they had sin. Each one, when I've studied on it, meditate upon it, gets more and more real. These people aren't the exception. Uh, they're normal folks. Some of them are just total screw-ups that, that no one else would have picked. And yet God picked them, loved them. He bestowed this, this great, undeserved, loving grace upon them. And that brings a messed up, impatient, sinful guy like myself a lot of hope. Because it's not about how good I can be for God. It's not about all the things I can do for God. It's about how God is so good to me. The story of Jephthah is found in Judges 11 to 12. Uh, Judges 10 to 12. Could you open up your Bibles? You should have a Bible around you. If not, there's some in the, in the chairs. Little blue books. Go ahead and grab those. Open up to Judges chapter 10. We're going to be there. I need you to be able to see it in front of you. So please, let me encourage you to open up your, your scriptures today. Thanks, Pat. Judges chapter 10. Uh, start at the beginning, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Story of Jephthah. When was the last time you heard a sermon on Jephthah? His name is just fun to say. Uh, it's this amazing tale that moves from tragedy to victory to tragedy again. It's a, it's a very sad story. Are you guys into the whole sad movie thing where the ending isn't very happy? Or do you guys like the happy? Who, how many happy ending people do we have? How many, I don't care how it ends, it's the sad makes me want to think end type people? See, three of them. That's exactly. And you guys are all nuts. So. 
I want at the end of a movie, I want the people married, and I want the bad guy dead, and I want them to have a new like I want everything to be happy wrapped up at the end. That's what I want. Uh, this is not that story. This is a very sad story, but I think it can teach us a lot about God's goodness to us, but also about how we conduct our faith in him. So turn to Judges 10. Jephthah, he entered history at this very low time in the history of Israel. Um, in fact, every judge we read about in the book as we carry through, he, they started at a very rough time. The Israelites under Joshua had conquered the kingdom, they'd settled the land, but when Joshua died, People began to forget about God. What he'd done. What the Bible says. And it said that um, they did what was right in their own eyes. Whatever they felt was right, that's what they did. So they started marrying non-believers. Started worshipping idols. Started sinning against each other. They, they, they just never passed their faith on to their kids. And it was just a sad state of affairs. It got worse and worse and worse. And every judge hit this cycle because it just continued to, to fall apart. So at different times in the life of these people, God sends discipline upon them. In the form of an enemy nation coming to conquer them and subject them to slavery and abuse. This causes them to realize that life without God doesn't work. Sometimes that's what our lives are about too. Sometimes you just realize life without God doesn't work and it makes them cry out to God. And so as they cry out to God, they say, God, come and help us. We're being oppressed. We're being wrecked. Life sucks. And please come and save us. And then they go and they smash their idols. They rededicate themselves to God. And God responds and sends them a judge who will lead them in a military victory to take over these bad guys, but will also teach them and conduct them in such a way as the law of Moses and the way Joshua did. But then that just judge would die and the cycle would begin again. When we reach Judges 10, the Israelites have fallen over and over, and again, we find them in pagan idolatry, they're in sin, they've rejected God almost completely, and they're being oppressed by, this, by a whole bunch of groups, but mostly by this group called the Ammonites. So we join the story here as the Ammonites are lining up to wipe out more of the Israelites, to conquer another part of their land, and then finally again, Israel gets to the end of themselves and cries out to God. They smash their idols, they repent of sin, they ask God to forgive them again, and God does again. So read from Judges 10 verse 15. Or no, let's start at 11. Judges 10, 11. The Lord replied, when the Egyptians, the Amorites, and the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Moanites oppressed you, see all these groups that have oppressed you, and you cried to me for help, did I not save you from their hands? But you have forsaken me and served other gods, so I will no longer save you. Go and cry out to the gods you've chosen, let them save you when you're in trouble. That, I could go on a sermon for the next 45 minutes on that. The way that we tell God to get lost and go find other gods. And God says, try it. See if it'll work. See if the bottle will work. See if the pills will work. See if the gambling will work. See, see if this stuff will work for you. And he says, okay. But, verse 15, the Israelites said to the Lord, we have sinned. God, do whatever you think is best, but please rescue us now. They got rid of the foreign gods, got rid of the foreign gods among them, and they served the Lord. And he, that's God, could bear Israel's misery no longer. See, God loves his people like a father loves children. And their pain is his pain. Verse 17. When the Ammonites were called to arms, these are the bad guys, the bad guys, the Ammonites were called to arms, and camped in Gilead, the Israelites, the good guys, assembled and camped in Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead, Gilead said to each other, Who will launch the attack against the Ammonites? Uh, wh whoever will launch the attack against the Ammonites will be the head of all those living in Gilead. So the question is this. Look, there's the enemy army. We've got to defend ourselves. Who's going to lead this attack? Is there some man of God around here that will be able to listen to him? That, that will have the skills to lead us in this military victory? Who's going to take on this superior force? Enter Jephthah. 
Start reading from chapter 11, verse 1. Jephthah, the Gileadite, 